Yes, I can. Thank you. Yes. All right. Uh, well, welcome. Uh, really nice for you to join us from Afghanistan. And um, I think you know the brief of our session this morning, so we won't waste time. We have 15 minutes for your presentation, and if possible, we're going to be able to ask you some questions, and then Achana will also like to say hello as the sub-editor of the specific countrywise group as well. So um, may I just say, ask Achana just to say hello so you can see a name and a face. Uh, hello, uh, Nina. Good morning. Hi. Hi. It's yeah. lovely to finally see the face behind the name, and I, I'm also looking at the proposal structure that you shared. So, looking forward to hearing oh, more that's about good. the chapter. That's, that's what I was going to say. I was hoping that you'd received it. I'm yeah. sorry that the technology hasn't quite worked in terms of testing. Otherwise, we would have sent you a PowerPoint. Um, and yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, over to you, Nina. Go for it. Okay, thank you. First of all, apologies. Um, I wish I was in, in well, some ways, I wish I was in Afghanistan and other ways, no, but I'm actually in Sydney, as Rekha would know. But um, I, um, I have a colleague of mine who's now in Germany, he's from Afghanistan, he's worked for UNESCO and the Department of Education in Afghanistan, Razia. She's working on... Um, and she's going to be the main the main writer for this the, because she understands the system very well. My other colleague is Jeremy Simpson, and he has just come back from Afghanistan, having spent uh, the last 12 months over there. And uh, he, again, is familiar with the Department of, uh, with the Ministry of Education and the various, I guess, um, complexities of a, a conflict state. Um, and attempting to actually educate. His focus is going to be on higher education uh, as well. So I want to ask some questions about that. So if you'd like me to go through, I have sent an outline um, and there's some some questions that I'd like to ask at the towards the end. But um, essentially, we obviously are going to set the context um, and I think one of the things with Afghanistan is the fact that it is what, um, you know, you might call a fragile state in the sense that it has been, um, unfortunately, in a state of complete sort of um, conflict pretty much since the 1970s or 80s with, with the Mujahideen and then uh, the Russians and the Taliban and... Obviously, then with the the uh, the, the uh, UN forces, the NATO forces going in, and uh, um, so there are many, I guess, levels and facets to a, a discussion on education in Afghanistan. So we're going to try and capture that as much as we can in the background and country context. Um, my specific area of interest, and I have worked with a number of colleagues there on women in Afghanistan and gender issues in terms of Afghanistan. We would like to really focus on that in the chapter to an, ex you know, to an extent. Um, um, and I can send you a couple of my um, papers that we have written on that that have uh, been published, one that is about to be published. Um, and so, yes, so noting the complexity of the situation in Afghanistan and, of course, the huge difference between uh, Kabul and regional areas as well. And from there, of course, looking at the barriers, the challenges they face, such as security, safety, again, gender issues. But we'll talk about more about those. So if you go through um, in terms of the educational structure, Again, it's quite complex because while there's a formal educational structure, there's also quite an informal uh, community-based education structure, particularly in the regions, as well as religious-based education structures with the madrasas. Um, and so these give it that level of complexity as well. So I'm, I'm wanting to know the extent of detail that you would like on these issues. And of course, there's a lot of NGO connection and support within this as well. 
both formally uh, through the, the the system, but also informally through regions, through 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 working with some of these community based organisations and schools. Indeed, to give you an example, I've just had my colleague Nasima Ramani, who's just gone back to Kabul. Only last week, I took her to the airport. She emailed me, and we've been. Um, I guess doing some fundraising with a, uh, an orphanage, for example, who looks after orphan children, some with disabilities, and she's asking me f how we can support them and somehow with education, with just, you know, life skills, etc. So, again, this is a very much an informal setting, but it is part of the system. Do you want detail on, on that and uh, as well? The other aspect was that to what extent do you want a coverage of higher education and teacher education? So there for me are, are questions for the group and uh, we've put, and of course, vocational education too. Um, please stop me if I'm talking too fast. <laughs> no? Okay, so um, in relation to, and again, vocational education, this is a, an important point in terms of involvement of the government, but also the, the, the business community if that exists, and then there are various issues there too. With higher education, um, what's interesting is the fact that they don't have a very sophisticated system of higher education as yet that goes up to master's degrees. So, you know, again, to what extent do we deal with that? But in itself, that's important. And through this theme, of course, is the education of women within this. And uh, um, we have just completed a paper on the job opportunities for women after they've completed a tertiary education. Um, uh, and also, as I mentioned, teacher education is crucial as far as the whole education system at the primary and secondary <laughs> level too. So from there, we intend to look at how, which departments, and this may change in terms of um, the order in which we put them. And I was looking at this and thinking that maybe we could put the, the governance frameworks, etc., cetera, uh, in the beginning before we look at the educational structure. So we do have to, again, multi-layered, the various ministries that are actually have an input into the educational structure. It's not just the Ministry of Education. And this is a very important point. And as I said, within that obviously is the religious connection within Afghanistan. Okay. And there's also private schools and private universities, as I've mentioned. So um, I guess what we would also like to focus on are some of these challenges too. Not just socioeconomic challenges, but also related to culture and tradition and some of these specifics where children can't go to school because of hardships uh, and who are required to work in the home. Uh, do, do you, would you like us to focus on some of the issues of corruption, for example, in government? Because that, from, from my talking to people in Afghanistan uh, and people who've had experience from a non-Afghans um, working over there, that that is a major issue. And this is not just there, it happens in many countries when there's government money that comes in or foreign money that comes in. It tends, and we have it in terms of our communities in Australia and regions where the government puts in a whole lot of money, but it's, it's not siphoned off. It goes into administration with a lot of these companies that work in the north of Western, of Western Australia or the Northern Territory. So getting the money to the grassroots is where the difficulty is. So how much would you like us to, to discuss some of these issues as far as, um, uh, you know, there's cont con contested issues, I suppose, in this particular chapter. Okay. So that's the basic structure. Um, and I'm happy for your comments. I'm ready to, 
to take notes. <laughs> Uh, Nina, thank you very much for uh, sharing your structure. And uh, yeah. since some of the questions you asked are very specifically related to the structure that you have shared, I will yes. consult with both Professor Padma Sarangpani and Professor Rekha Pappu to also see to what extent some of these may be getting covered in the other sections that are being written as part of the handbook and we'll come back to you with answers yes, to the questions good. that you have raised. Okay. But uh, yeah. since we have other uh, authors uh, here who have contributed to the handbook, specifically related to school education systems as well as uh, contributors to higher education, I, with the permission of chair, perhaps we could have some of the comment, their comments and questions on of That would be that. great, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Nina. Yeah. Yeah, thank I invite, you. I invite anyone who would like to ask some comments or question. Um, I know that uh, we, we just said that this would happen later, but I just wanted to suggest that from the little that you've told us already, uh, Afghanistan is a perfect case of uh, where the history and the longer social, economic, political context matters so much in trying to understand uh, the schooling and educational system on the ground. So I just want to say, I hope you can do a really deep job of analyzing the antecedents of what exists. Otherwise, we'd go wrong in understanding it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, that's a very important point. There's another issue which comes into this, of course, and this is the fact that the statistics are, are difficult because they are government statistics. So we need to also put into the chapter that the collection of data in regional areas and remote areas is very difficult. But also that I find that the government, and I'll and just say this again, talking to people, that tries, and all governments do this, it's not just Afghanistan, tries to put a positive spin on what the statistics are. So I suppose what I'm saying is we also have that dilemma of saying these are government statistics, but we can't necessarily verify. And these are statistics that are used by all the NGOs when they work in this area too. And and we, we found that in, in reading all this, the same, you know, nine million you know girls go to school or whatever the statistics are um and this has increased from you know 2001 or since the the, the taliban etc however there's also difficulties with these so that's another issue but as you say this is part of the whole discussion of the social and the economic and the political context of education in a state like afghanistan i mean um amazing um young people there who are incredibly resilient through all of this too i have one more question from lena yeah. good morning nina i my name is lena i just okay. wanted to um uh, comment on your question about higher edge covering higher education and yeah. vocational education <clears throat> Uh, we have Professor Mohammed Naim Asimi from Vice Chancellor of uh, Kabul University who ah. is writing um, the section on higher education. Um, oh, do you, okay. I didn't realize that, yes. Do you know him? I mean, do you work yes, with I him? I think I've met him. If he, I wonder if he's come to Sydney. I because wouldn't know that. Because we had a delegation yes. from Kabul University who did come to Sydney. I wouldn't know that, but I was thinking that if you have something already written up on higher education or vocational education, if you would share that with us, that would be wonderful because we can then just maybe take material out if necessary, if something has not been covered, so we can make a more complete document. Um, okay, so you would like okay. us to share that with you without putting it into the chapter, is that yeah. what you're saying? Or, yeah. Yes, okay, yes, well, I yes. will ask Jeremy. Jeremy's working on that okay. to see what he can send. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. All and right. I, would, so I would assume that if you put it somewhere else, you would acknowledge the fact that Of he's course, here. absolutely. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, time for yeah. one last question, Nina, and then I'm going to ask you to wrap up, please, after this okay. question. Um, I'm going to ask the chair to uh, give me a minute 
to just share uh, uh, our own center's work. I'm from Tata Institute of Social Science, Mumbai. The center is running a MA uh, program for uh, teacher educators in uh, uh, Kabul. So this is a blended uh, uh, program Ooh, for cool. two years. Um, I was in Kabul, in fact, last year uh, teaching the students. Yeah, my question relates to the curriculum uh, revision uh, that is going on, the school curriculum revision that's going on in Kabul right now. In 2016, a draft was put up, but uh, yes. subsequently we do not know uh, what has happened uh, to it. Um. I would have to investigate, I would have to ask that question of Razia as well to see. She would have a much more on the ground uh, focus on that. So perhaps I could actually ask that of her and we could email you. But I'm interested in the the, the, the MA program, the, the, the teacher education program that you do have there because, again, there are various programs. We have a colleague here who runs teacher training in Kabul as well. And we have organisations who run teacher training programs. Um, but uh, what is not clear is the um, the accreditation that goes with these. And there is no, to my understanding, no national accreditation body or, yeah. So that to me is one of the difficulties with with the the, the, the programs that are being done. But Again, that requires uh, a, a little more uh, research on our part too. Nina, I'm sorry that I'm going to have to cut you off because our time uh, doesn't allow us. But I hope this has just been the opening of a conversation with further colleagues who have prompted you to some of these issues. Um, and also working with the sub-editor to elaborate your structure, I think, would be a way forward of a rather complex and interesting uh, prospective chapter. So okay, thank you, thank, thank you, you thank very you. much. Any and comments that people would like to um, email to me in relation to the structure would be very, very, yeah, very welcomed. Thank you. So we look we, have to, we have to close the session. Do you stay on or do you, 